All right, somebody hold my 122 terabyte SSD because my good friend Avi has promised that he's going to blow my mind, but we'll, we'll hold out judgment. Because I don't know, Avi, I don't know if you much, can get much cooler than a 122 terabyte drive. Hey, Avi, welcome to 65 on the road. Welcome Thank back. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Great to be here. And what an amazing time to be, uh, you know, uh, be in the conference. AI is everywhere. Jensen's keynote yesterday was just mind boggling. And uh, yeah, the ecosystem is buzzing. And uh, we, we are lucky and proud to be partnering with NVIDIA on a new technology, which we'll talk about today. Yeah. So last time we met, we're on top of a truck. Oh, yeah. uh, we were on top of an AI truck holding a 122 terabyte TLC drive that you guys have promised and proven to me is performing at the level that allows some of the world's largest cloud providers to provide AI services to the world. And you said, Keith, I promise you that we have something cooler in store. What is that something cooler in store that you have for us? All right. As things get ha uh, faster, more compute, you heard Jensen talk about more compute is going to be driven over the next multiple generations of servers. Guess what? When, when things get more, more compute and more performance, things get harder. It needs to be cooled down. Yeah. So you have to actively look at cooling solutions. What we are unveiling today, uh, at, uh, this week at GTC, is essentially today's AI servers have liquid cooling. Liquid cooling is not a new concept. Right. Liquid cooling has been available on GPUs and CPUs, uh, but liquid cooling extended to storage now for the first time with the introduction of our 9.5 mm E1.S uh, Solidime PS1010 SSD. Um, a quick visual demonstration here. Uh, you have the liquid wait, wait, hold. No. Before you give me a demo, Avi, I don't see where you put the tubes. Oh, there are no tubes. We co you connect it to the uh, coal plate, and the coal plate touches the back front side of the SSD, and we have internal mechanism in, and thermal management designed as part of our solution, so both sides get cooled, and as a result, you get active cooling support across the full SSD. All right. You got to show me this. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, you're, you're, okay, you're getting cool. <laughs> Please show me. Yeah. So what what's actually happening here is the coolant, liquid coolant, comes and touches the coal plate. Pull one out, Kate. Pull one out. Yeah. Go ahead. Pull one out. Wait. The last time I pulled a drive out of production, <laughs> the, the whole Lotus no system no, went down. We're we're fine. Pull oh, one oh, out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Pull one out. There you go. So you, what do you see is a spring-loaded mechanism. Oh, the spring went out. Yeah, the spring-loaded mechanism. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a spring-loaded mechanism where the coolant comes and touches the coal plate. The coal plate touches the backside of the SSD. We have internal uh, thermal material and our IP. So this is a solid IM IP. We have uh, we uh, not all E1 SS have the same th the, uh, uh, thermal connection. Right. So most of the E1 E1 SS in the market today only have uh, the back side being cooled, while the front side continues to be hot. But in an SSD, you have components on both sides, so you need active cooling on both sides of the SSD, and that's why today's you have fans, which are air cooled solutions. In our E1.S, what you see is essentially uh, a coal plate kit. So Solidime had to not, not just invent um, and work on uh, the SSD, we actually had to partner and design a coal plate technology to take advantage because storage is one component in the server which needs serviceability. It needs hot pluggability. GPUs and CPUs are soldered down, you don't you know, right. or take them out. But SSDs, you want want them to be pluggable, hot pluggable, and as a result, we had to in, we had to design the coal plate uh, to meet this requirement. Uh, so where physically, so right on this server, you have it sitting outside the server, yeah. which is not you know yeah. what the final solution is going to look like. Where's in the server? Where is this going to go? Is this going to be where I'm? I need to call into my colo. I need to get remote, remote hands to replace a SSD. Yeah. Like where in the where in the chassis do you expect this to be sit? It'll be front and center. So typical AI's or any servers, you'll have SSD components right. uh, always in the front. In the front, right? Uh, yeah. And that's where this uh, we want to maintain the same continuity even in a liquid cool setting. 
and that's where the innovation had to happen and the solution work had to happen because you want serviceability, manageability, uh, and extendability of uh, hot plug, hot plug, hot uh, plugging an SSD. So as a result. What you see here is a concept, a, a prototype, but in actual AI deployments, you'll see liquid cooling coming and touching the cold plate. The front of the the front of the panel will have the storage solutions in them. So it's important to understand the whole point of this. As equipment heats up, no matter what the technology, you have to throttle back performance to maintain the heat profile. Correct. So what are the expected results of being able to liquid cool, cool your SSD? Yeah, so what we are demoing here is ex exactly that, right? Every time you have more compute, you, you have more heat generated. And the whole point is to keep your GPU fed with data. Uh, you want your SSDs to perform at the highest bandwidth, uh, even in a uh, you know, constrained power environment. As you heat up, typically your drive throttles. But with active with liquid cooling, what you are able to show here is uh, we are able to maintain a, a, an SSD temperature much lower than fans, as well as performance being no, no throttling of performance. It's running full peak performance, uh, in, in, even in an extreme workload. So on the show floor, there's a lot of DCDs, uh, liquid cooling systems that you can plop next to your system from a physical cabling perspective. I, what, is this impacting me from a, uh, a cooling perspective? One, I'm losing fans, yep. which is no more a fans. huge advantage. Yep. And now I don't even know if I can tell them I'm inside a data center if I don't hear all the fans. But two, from a, you know, from a, a liquid cooling management, from a cooling management system perspective, what's the overhead? Yeah, so there are benefits across the uh, ecosystem. I'll start with the SSD first, right? So SSDs perform better, you'll have maximum bandwidth. At the server level, what you see is no more fans, which allow allow for more real estate for GPU deployments or shrinkage, uh, your, your servers becoming smaller and more efficient. And at the infrastructure level, you don't have to maintain your air cooling HVAC systems at a much lower temperature because everything's being cooled by the liquid. So you, you have savings and TCO benefits across the uh, pipeline. So talk to me about this relationship with NVIDIA because on stage, I'm going to infer something that Jensen said on stage. Like the less money you spend on X, you can spend it on uh, GPU. Yes. Cooling power, the less I spend on cooling my uh, storage components and the less I spend on energy, the more GPUs I can buy. So talk to me about this special relationship you have with NVIDIA. Yeah, so with NVIDIA, we, 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 we have a full AI portfolio of storage solutions for uh, AI. Um, uh, we talked about our E1.S uh, solution, which is more on the server, like next to the GPU. Right. Um, from NVIDIA, we only get the tip, you know, I've been in the storage industry long enough. There's only four requirements coming from us. Low latency, high bandwidth, high density, and lower cost. Uh, you heard Jensen talk about three of those yesterday. He kind of articulated the fourth one as well. But whenever he talks about more compute, what translates to us in the storage world is I need a lower latency, high bandwidth SSD. So what we have here is a Gen 5 uh, SSD the highest performing SSD in our portfolio uh, and one of the best real world performing SSDs for Gen 5. So obviously this is going to sit as close to the GPU yes. as possible yes. because one of the consistent messages I've talked to practitioners about, they walked away and said GTC 25 is about IO. Yep. Getting as much data into the GPU as quickly as possible to reduce the overall uh, latency and high, higher uh, uh, create higher efficiency use of the GPU. So this goes right next to the GPU. Yes. But this is typically not what I'm going to put my big production data on. Yes. For that, Keith, we have our You're one. You're going to do it to me again. We have our 122 does, terabyte folks, SSD. He does this to me every time. He brings these things here, and he never lets me take them home. So, but but I digress. Go ahead, Adi. You yes. Go. So while we talk about the low latency, high bandwidth, close to the GPU, 
you still have storage servers. We've talked about, you heard Jensen yesterday talk about training and inferencing just kicking off. Inferencing, we, we've heard with, from our analyst, inference data generated on inference will outpace training data by a factor of three, which means you need more storage, which means you need efficient storage. And that's where our high density QLC SSDs come in. So we've had amazing success with our product, uh, QLC product last year when we announced we have our customers building AI data centers, grounds up, who are deploying 122 terabytes in, into their AI servers uh, for their storage needs. Um, and going forward, the direct attach with our E1.S solution. So we have a couple of minutes. I'm going to let you do, I'm going to let you do the champion's donut around the show floor virtually. Give me some hero numbers about the efficiency of packing 122 terabytes of SSD into a couple of U's of... No, let, of let's not say two U's, I'll give you one U. One, one U, okay, one, that's the challenge is out there. One U, 24 bays, tw four petabytes in one single U. So, I know we're at an AI conference, and density is not a concern because we're not as a concern when it comes to how much rack space I have. Density is a concern when I come to when it comes to power. Correct. What's the effective meaning of now that I'm putting liquid cool small form factor drives right next to the SSD, right next to my GPUs, that in a one U chassis, what's the net effect for customers who need a lot of data? and their AI data center. They have the data instantaneously to them. Now, you know, for what all your training needs, your inferencing needs, you have your the SSDs, your E1.S SSDs connected directly to the GPU using NVIDIA's uh, uh, GDS technology, which is GPU direct attach. And uh, over the network, you have storage servers being connected and fulfilled where you have all your density needs being fulfilled. So yeah, uh, from an overall AI portfolio standpoint, uh, we, we pr uh, recommend uh, direct attach low latency solutions. And for all your network attached needs, you have efficiency improvement in terms of all TCO. You'll have the slides. You can look it up on storageforai.com, which is a Solidime web page, which talks about rack reduction, TCO benefits, um, uh, as well as performance and um, uh, scalability. The other key thing, uh, Keith, is scalable, scalability. We've talked about scale up. We can also scale out, right? Uh, data is only going to grow. Uh, you're not going to keep building new AI infrastructure in this. So you need solutions which are ready and for today's environment, but also come future, you scale up using the same, same footprint. So uh, we're not going to stop uh, making high density SSDs. We've got NVIDIA telling us to make more high density SSDs and more low latency uh, SSDs as well. So that's our message coming from NVIDIA platform partners to us. And we're going to be driving that into the Solidime roadmap. You know what? I have this new saying, optimize for value versus vanity. I'm not going to lie to you. I want a 122 terabyte enterprise SSD. I have no use case for it but I want one. I come from a world where the idea of having non-moving parts, big drives that provide data as fast as, it, as possible to GPUs, CPUs, and memory just makes my job as an enterprise architect easier. And Shri, I'm gonna put in another bid for it. I want a 122 terabyte drive, even though I can only practically use two terabytes of it. We've had a blast talking to Solidime over the past couple of days, understanding where they're at in the ecosystem, how these high density drives, these liquid cool drives fit in your AI factory. Stay tuned for more coverage from 6.5 on the show floor of GTC 25. We're going to squeeze into even smaller places just like these drives. Talk to you next episode.